Lord, we want Pete here. So the easiest and most epic way to play all of our favorite retro games is using an incredible free app called Emulet for Windows, which greatly simplifies downloading and configuring all of the best emulators we'll ever need to get it in a slick user interface. So here are the eight simple steps to get Emulet for Windows set up on our Ally X, which of course also works for the original RG Ally, Legion Go, and indeed all Windows-based handhelds. Plus I'll share my top three tips to get the very best out of Emudeck. So to do this, I'm gonna use an awesome foldable Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad by a company called Zedo. I highly recommend this and I'll leave a link below in the description. Step one is to download Emudeck. So let's open our favorite web browser on our ally, which in my case is Brave. And let's head to the official Emudeck website, which is emudeck.com, link in the description below. Let's click on the top right where it says download, Scroll down just a little and simply click on the Windows option. We can join the Patreon for a few extra perks if we want to and to also support these awesome developers. I'm going to select download for free for the time being and we'll join the Patreon later and simply select where we want to download to, which in my case is the downloads folder. Next for step two, let's install Emudeck. So just head to the folder where we downloaded it, which in my case is downloads, double click to run it. You may get this slow DNS detected message like I did, so just click yes. In this Windows PowerShell message, click yes. In the Git for Windows message, click yes. I would recommend making sure we're plugged into the charger to do this, by the way. And it just takes a few minutes while everything installs ready for us to configure. For step three, we now need to configure Emidec as this is your custom message pops up towards the end of installation. We can choose easy mode and customize options later, but let's select custom mode to walk through each step in this together and get all of our emulators set up exactly how we want them. Next, let's select what drive we'd like our ROM directory to be on, either the local C drive or you may want to select the D drive if you want all of your games on your SD card. Retro games are called ROMs in emulation terms, by the way. I'm gonna select the C drive and then click next. Now let's select our device. Currently the Ally X that I'm doing this on still isn't available here, but of course the Asus RG Ally option is perfectly fine. So let's select this, then click next. Next is pick your level of integration screen. This is a very new addition and this wasn't on my tutorial last year. Now making this tutorial, I selected low here for the first time around, but I ran into significant issues. So we do need to select the higher integration. I repeat, it is crucial that we pick the higher integration option as we do need Steam or Manager even on Windows to avoid issues down the line. On the next screen is where we pick our theme for Emulation Station, which is where we launch our games from. Again, a lot more have been added since last year. This is a personal choice which you prefer, but for me, I absolutely love this Artflix one. I would highly recommend that you pick this then click next. Now select every emulator that we want to be installed and configured. I'm gonna click MAME, which are arcade machines, then click both. The Dreamcast emulator called Flycast, then click both. The Atari Jaguar emulator called Big PMU. And finally MGBA, then click both for Game Boy Advance games. And with everything now selected, let's now click next. Next is configure autosave. And I highly recommend that we set this to on. So all of our games autosave on exit and auto load into our save points. Next is the configure retro achievement screen. And these are PS5 like trophies for retro games. I would highly recommend creating an account at retroachievements.org if you haven't already and then logging in here as this is a nice little addition when playing our retro games. These next options are all what you personally prefer as a gamer. For me, I'm gonna select game bezels to on for even more of a nice retro feel for these older systems. I'm gonna select four by three aspects ratio for classic Sega systems, and also four by three aspects ratio for classic Nintendo games. I'm gonna select the wider 16 by nine aspects ratio for Dreamcast and N64 games, and also 16 by nine on the net screen also for GameCube games. I'm gonna turn LCD shader to on for these four classic handheld retro systems, but you can keep this off if you don't want to truly recreate the old retro look. Next, I'm gonna put the CRT shader to on for 2D games on these systems, as it brings back memories for me of those old school TVs I had as a kid. 
and I'll choose the CRT shader to be on for classic 3D games on these systems too. And remember that we can always change these settings later on so we don't need to stress about this at all. Next is this overview screen which displays all of the configurations that we've selected. So if you're happy with all of this then click finish to begin the installation. And this is where the magic happens as Emidec now saves us many, many hours by downloading and configuring all of the emulators, yes. I don't know about you, but while we wait, I think now is a perfect time for a pancake intermission. Okay, so after about 10 minutes in, we get this visual C++ message, so just hit yes. Then after a few more minutes, we get this Python message. Don't worry, no snakes are included. Simply just hit yes. After a few more minutes, we get this Pegasus front-end message. Just hit continue. So we're very near the end of the installation process and we get this message about RG Ally configuration. So just hit next. Next, we get this copy our game screen. Let's click manual copy. Then click on open emulation folder. Then click close. In this waiting for manual copy screen, hit next. And on this how to launch our games screen, hit next. This screen tells us our emulation hotkeys that I'll mention in the tip section in a moment and hit finish. Next is this what's left screen and Emudeck is now fully installed. What we've just done, we only need to do this just this once. So let's close Emudeck by clicking close. And we can get back into it in two ways, either by clicking on this newly created shortcut or we can hit the start menu, go to all, Scroll down and Emidec is now installed. So let's load this back up. So remember that this part of Emidec is the back end. This is used to change settings and is not used to launch our retro games. We use an app called Emulation Station to do this and we'll come onto that in a moment. I do want to highlight some key settings here in Emidec quickly. The first is quick settings. I highly recommend making autosave is on, bezels is already on, and we can change stuff like aspect ratios here at any time. Next is manage emulators. Keep an eye on this regularly as if any emulators have an orange notification on it, then it means an update is ready. And it definitely is worth updating these regularly. Steam ROM manager is here and we still do need this even as Windows users for our controls to work correctly. And we'll come back to this in a moment. The screen resolution options is here. And I'd recommend setting all of these to 1080p like PS3, Switch and Wii U 2, as of course the Ally screen is 1080p and then hit save. Retro achievements are here if you haven't yet logged in. BIOS check is one of the most helpful tools that Emidec offers. The more modern retro consoles need BIOS to work and right now when I click everything is red, but don't worry we'll make this green in just a moment. Cloud saves are near the bottom to sync between devices if we are a Patreon member, or we can just back up our games to the cloud here if we want to. The get early access button brings up to join their Patreon area if you'd like to. And the final option is we can uninstall Emidec if we ever need to. So with Emidec now installed and fully configured, and we know now how to access its settings, we need to get our retro games, which in emulation terms are called ROMs for step four. And there are three ways to do this. The first way is to open up our favorite web browser. Again, in my case is Brave, which is especially great for this. Now as YouTubers, as I'm sure you're aware, I can't tell you exactly where to get ROMs from, but if you type in the name of the game, like in this example is Street Fighter 2, which is a classic. Then the name of the retro system, so like SNES. Then the word ROM, like this. Then I'm sure you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Something else that may help to find large collections of ROMs is I just love how the internet is like a huge archive. Hmm. When we've downloaded a ROM like this, let's click on it, extract it back into our downloads folder, open up the newly created folder, select the ROM file, cut or copy it, I'm just going to cut it, create a new tab, open our emulation folder that Emidec created for me which is in the C drive, open this very important emulation folder, click on the ROMs folder, and now we start putting our games, which remember in emulation terms are called ROMs, into the correct system folders right here. So for example, Game Boy Advance games go into this GBA folder, GameCube into this GC folder and so on. 
So let's open up our SNES folder right here and simply paste the ROM into this correct system folder, just like this. The second way is that if you've been doing PC handheld gaming for a while, then hopefully you've got tons of ROMs you've accumulated over the years backed up on an SD card like I have. I've set up Emudeck previously, so head into our backed up emulation folder on our SD card, then ROMs, select the system here which in my case is my favourite retro console, the SNES, select what specific games you want, or I'm just going to select all of the ones I've backed up, open a new tab, select the C drive, then our newly created emulation folder, then ROMs, then in this case SNES, and simply paste our backed up games into our new folder. And the third way, which is the easiest way to get ROMs, is to buy this one terabyte SD card already packed full of over 40,000 retro games. I've literally just covered this in a vid. I'll leave a link to watch and also a link to purchase below in the description. So we simply insert this SD card, click on the D drive, open the RetroBat folder, we can of course launch a different emulation system called Retrobat here, but for this video let's head to ROMs, select any system, select my first PC for me was the amazing Atari ST, which has thousands of ROMs here. But I'll head into the PS2 folder, again hundreds of ROMs here, but I'll pick Simpsons, hit and run, copy it, open a new tab, select the C drive, then our new emulation folder, then into ROMs, into the PS2 folder, then simply paste it into here. So, so easy. Next for step five is BIOS. So just go back to the main emulation folder. And this folder is so important. I cannot stress this enough for our ROMs and BIOS. And let's now open the BIOS folder. And we're gonna place our BIOS files right here in a moment. Let's minimize our BIOS folder, open up Emudeck, which I'll do from this new shortcut. Scroll down on the left hand side to the excellent tool called BIOS Checker and this will all be red if your BIOS is missing for more modern emulators like PS1 and 2, Switch, Sega CD, Saturn, Nintendo DS and Dreamcast. Let's open up our favourite web browser, Brave is particularly awesome for this. Again us YouTubers can't tell you exactly where and guys so many gamers new to this get freaked out here. But BIOS is really so, so simple. We just Google search the name of the system. So in this example, PS1, and then the word BIOS, that's it. It really is that simple. And you guys are super smart. You'll find out what you need doing this. So here I've downloaded the single PS1 BIOS file called SCPH1001. Let's cut it from the downloads folder. Go to the tab where our emulation folder is. We're already in the BIOS folder. Simply paste the PS1 BIOS file into here, just like you can see here. Go back into our Emudex settings, click off the BIOS checker, then back onto it. And yes, the PS1 BIOS has been detected and is now green, yes. If this is your first ever time doing this, then just find the BIOS for each system, which does take a little bit of time, but we only need to get them once. And then I recommend backing them up somewhere safe, like an SD card. And I'll demonstrate this. So let me minimize Emudeck, open up a new tab, head into my D drive, which is my SD card, then the emulation folder. And here in this backup BIOS file, I placed all my BIOSes in here a few years ago. So let's select this, then copy it, then head back to my tab in my newly created emulation folder I just made on the C drive and paste my backed up BIOS folder in here full of my BIOS files, that as I say I did a while ago. Then open Emudeck, click off the BIOS checker, then back into it, and it's pretty much all green. So Ryujinx is red for me, even though my firmware is in the Ryujinx BIOS folder, and also my two key files are both in the keys folder. So in our start menu, let's head to the Emudeck folder, then open the Ryujinx emulator, this first time it says keys not found. So click file, then open Ryojinx folder, then system, paste our title.keys file and also our prod.keys file here. Then go to actions, then install keys, then install keys from the zip. I've got mine which at the time of recording is 19.0.1. Click yes to install these, then okay, then close Ryojinx. Now Emudeck, when we rescan, is still showing red. But if we head back into the Emudeck folder, 
then open Rijinx again. We don't get that keys are missing pop up, so don't worry. It should still work even though it's shown red in the Emery Deck BIOS checker. So now that our ROMs and BIOS are in the correct folders, for step six, let's now look at Steam ROM Manager. Make sure Steam is completely closed by looking in our tray, tapping on the Steam icon, then tap on Exit Steam, then in Emidec, click on Steam ROM Manager in the middle on the left. This very first time, we need to choose our Steam directory. So hit Browse, head to the C drive, then Program Files and in brackets x86, then the Steam folder, then press Select Folder. Hit Next, and here we select our Steam user account. If yours doesn't appear here, then you may need to log into your Steam account in the official Steam app first within Armory Crate. And yes, make sure that we've logged into the Steam app here first, then click Save, then hit Next. And we only need to do this this first time. Now, Steam ROM Manager is very different to what I'm used to. I'll be really honest, I really don't like this look and it really threw me off. So let's head to Settings. In this Select Theme dropdown, select the Emidec theme. Ah, that looks much nicer. Click Add Games, then Pass, then Back. And remember, any times we add any games to the ROMs folders, we need to click Add Games, then Pass each and every time. If we click on View Games, we can also see our games right here too. So let's click Back, exit out of Steam ROM Manager, and exit Emidec. When we click on Add Games, then Pass, this Save to Steam button may appear, and if it does, click it. Then when the Done Adding Entries message disappears, we can finally exit out. For step seven, let's launch the front end called Emulation Station by hitting Start, then open the Emidec folder, then the Emulation Station app. This very first time you may get this message, so just click Quit, and then open it back up. Remember that Emidec is the back end where we change our settings and all of the behind the scenes stuff like the BIOS checker. And this emulation station is the awesome front end where we can access all of our favorite systems and games in one convenient place. Let's change the theme by pressing start, then UI settings, then theme downloader. Click proceed this first time. Select any you like here, but as I say, my absolute favorite is Artflix, so let's download that. So now go to theme, scroll across to art flicks to select this. And now we have this absolutely gorgeous theme that displays all of our systems in an incredible way. All of our ROMs are categorized by system and to scrape artwork for your ROMs, hit the menu button, click scraper, click on scrape these systems, go down to select all and press start. And if we have a lot of ROMs, then this may take a while, so definitely grab a hot drink and snack. But afterwards, we have this truly jaw-dropping presentation that includes box art, description, game logo, and background for each game. And for step eight, while we're in this amazing front end called Emulation Station, swipe up to get our Windows menu, right-click, and select Pin to Taskbar, as this really will be one of our most used apps. So that when we quit, it's ready right here to go, and with one click, we're into our glorious retro gaming. Congratulations, your RG Ally, Ally X, Legion Go, or indeed any Windows handheld is now fully set up for retro gaming. Drop a like and also subscribe to the channel if this helped you. And as promised, here are three quick tips. Number one is that if you're having any issues or all, the head to manage emulators in Emidec, click on an emulator that's not working correctly like Dolphin, and we can reset the configuration, which should fix it. For issues with Emulation Station, click Reset Configuration. Tip two is to always make sure Gamepad is selected in Control Mode, otherwise controls will not work. And tip three to quickly exit out of a game is just to press Select and Start buttons together at the same time. I'd love to hear what the first three retro games that you'll play with Emidec for Windows are. And also let us know if there are any specific tips and settings that you recommend for Emidec in the comments below. And as a thank you for watching this far, I'd love to share this awesome quote. The best way to be happy is to turn the negatives into positives. Don't let anybody steal your joy and be thankful for what you have. Yes, there are many situations and people who can really bring us down and make us stressed. But let's guard ourselves away from those things and simply be grateful for what we have. So stay encouraged today, guys. If you've made it this far, then I know you love emulation and playing retro games. So check out my one terabyte retro SD card vid by clicking here. 
I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.